terminology and language that, that our players understand and that we talk about. And I think it's really important that you have that. And I'll talk about why as we get further in, but you know, coming out of timeouts and stuff like that, or even just in the middle of the game, for you to be able to talk to your team about specific instances on the court is important. Like the things that we have, the pack line, which we define as essentially we in, in practice on the court, we have a line that it's inside just, just about a, a half a foot inside the three-point line all the way around the court. And we put another, it looks like another three-point line. And for our players, if you're not guarding the ball, it's almost like an electric fence for like a dog. You can't go past it. You can't go past it. So it would be about like right here, all the way around the court. And we would call that the pack line. You are not allowed to go past that pack line unless you're guarding the ball. Second thing is we clearly define the post. And, and it is, you know, if we had the, it's just, just above the, just above the, the block and then all the way, I'd say just about a step outside of the paint. And so when we say the post area, that's what we have defined the post area. And it's a big emphasis for us to keep the ball out of the post. I got four questions that I think that you should ask yourself in regards to your defense. The first one, can it put you in position to beat the best teams on your schedule? <clears throat> Secondly, can you play this defense and win on the road? Thirdly, do you improve as a team as the season goes? And then fourthly, can you advance in postseason tournaments playing the defense that you play? I think those are really important questions that you've got to be able to answer satisfactorily, you know, if you're going to feel comfortable with the way you're playing defense. And then for us, I've got six things that if this doesn't happen in practice on a daily basis, it's not like a little, little thing, it's a huge thing. And one of my players is over here, Mo Hester. And when we practice, we've got three um, stationary bikes on the end of the court. And when one of our players doesn't do one of these things right, it's, it's just, I just point to the bike. And our strength coach is over there, and they go sit on the bike until they've mentally figured out, like, boy, I better not do that anymore. But I think that just in defense in general, you've got to really, 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 really have some things that the core of your defense that you are not going to let go and you are going to make sure your players are going to do on a daily basis, and you have got to make a huge deal about it. Because if you allow kids to, to not do these things, they're, not, they're going to not do them. So for us and for me, it's number one, committed to transition defense. If you are not sprinting on every play, it's not, it's, it's not the little thing. It is a huge thing. And you're going right to the bike if you're at Xavier and you're, and you're not sprinting in transition defense. The second thing is keeping the ball out of the post. If just for us, if you're going to play and field goal percentage defense is going to be a big deal, then if you can keep the ball out of the paint, the post area as we define it, that's going to be a big deal. And it's, it's going to make you take outside shots that just from a percentage wise, it's going to be a lower percentage through the course of a game and through the course of a season. So transition defense, committed to it, keep the ball out of the low post, and then ball pressure. Um, even though we're not trying to get steals necessarily, you've got to make the other team feel a little bit uncomfortable when they have the ball on the perimeter. Because if not, they're just going to pick you apart with their passing. <clears throat> Early help on dribble penetration is a big deal in the pack line defense. <clears throat> That'd be the fourth thing. You have got to be in position to help your teammates. Um, I think the best teams uh, defensively are ones that can really help each other. And so that's a big deal. The fifth thing is awareness off the ball. Um, you've got you've to, as much as we talk about help, you've got you've to see both to guard cutters and, and so forth. So awareness off the ball. And then lastly, it's simple, but contest all shots. I can tell you the number of times that, you know, people are shooting and, and we've got our hands out like this instead of like that. Once again, through the course of a game or the course of a season, if you can really emphasize contesting shots, it's a big deal. So committed to transition defense, keep the ball out of the post, pressure the ball, early help on dribble penetration, awareness off the ball, and contest all shots. Before we start um, with transition defense, I'll also tell you, you know, the reason that I really, really like the pack line defense is, um, and you're going to see when we get into the concepts, is it, it does a great job of taking away dribble penetration. And if you really think about 
kind of the way college basketball has gone, both men's and women's. Years ago, when I grew up, everybody was running like the Indiana motion. Pass, screen, cut, move the ball side to side. The game has evolved to the point where it's about run it up the floor, spacing, drive it, drive it, drive it. So I think this defense does a phenomenal job of taking away what most teams are trying to do. And that's why I really like it. And I think that's, that's a big reason why it's allowed us to be really successful. So the first thing we're talking about is post defense. And I'll tell you, and hopefully this will all make sense when we get to the end of it, how you play in the post has to be related to how you guard on the perimeter. Those have to have a kind of rhyme or reason and concept that, that works together. And, and I'll, I'll explain that as we kind of go. Um, but here, give me, just give me a couple people out here. Like, like probably a lot of people, we, we kind of define um, from the free throw line, extended out here, below and above, how we're kind of guarding the low post. What we do, and, and you know, a lot of people are going to say, hey, you can do this. You've got big post players. They're big, they're strong, and physical, and we do. But I'm telling you, I think anybody can do this. It, it has less to, it's got a lot more about your technique and how well you do it. Now, certainly, if you have big post players like we have, it helps. But I think anybody can do this. We are going to go, if it's below the free throw line, three-quarter in what we call chin on shoulder. So you're going to kind of get your chin on your shoulder. And remember, we have defined the post as just, and we'll put tape in practice. There'll be tape in here. But it'll be just above the block and probably just about a half a foot beyond. And we are trying to keep them out of the low post. Okay? Do not allow them to get in the low post. Because if you can keep them out of the low post area and make them shoot these shots over you, it's really it's, it's a low percentage shot. That's, that's really what we want them doing. So we're going to say when the ball is below the free throw line, chin on shoulder with an arm bar. And what we really, really emphasize with our players is being really physical low and, and fighting early in the low post. Because you have got to root them out of the low post area, and you cannot allow them to bury you in there. OK? So we're going to get chin on shoulder with a hand in the passing lane. And like I said, it'll make sense when we talk about guarding the perimeter. But we're going to really, just to give you a, a preview, we're going to really pressure the ball here and not allow them to get to the baseline. So ideally, if we're playing well, and they're playing against pressure here, where you're keeping me from there, and I'm passing, I'm throwing there, and you're stepping off the block to get it, and we've got them where we want them. OK? But we are, we are going to be three-quarter, three-quarter, and then on the, on the catch, behind, behind. And what we, what we kind of teach here is, is what we call pop back. So it's three-quarter, three-quarter, and then we pop back right here on the catch, on the catch. So you're not, you, know, you can't be just you know, laying all on top of them. When they catch the ball, they're going to spin right around you, OK? So we pop back, and then when they dribble, go ahead. We, we really, really emphasize, once again, physical with your lower body. They call a lot of fouls up here and not many down here. And then we, we have a concept that we call, when they pick it up, is we call it walling up. Walling up. And you know, a lot of people, it's, it's once again terminology that our players get and that we talk about and, and we work on this, is that we wall up and we are trying to get them to shoot over this right here. So now, if we've done a good job keeping them out of the low post, and we've, we've moved our feet, we've been physical with our lower body, and we've walled up, Basically, what I'm telling you, back to the, the kind of premise of our, of our defense, it's about field goal percentage defense. We want them taking that shot over our post players. OK? So we, we're going to go chin on shoulder. We're going to be really physical. We're going to try to get them off the block, off the block, go ahead. And when they catch, we're going to pop back and be low, and they dribble. Boom, 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 wall up, just like that. Just like that, OK? We call it walling up. It's a hard shot. If you've got them in the right area and you're making, your, making the defense shoot over that, it's a hard, hard shot to finish. It's a hard shot to finish. Now, if, if the ball is you know, at the top there or above the free throw line, then we're going to be up the line and on the line. We make a big deal about they cannot throw the ball from the top. They cannot throw the ball in from the top. Because if they're going to throw it from the top, then they're probably going to have a great angle. That's the other thing is we, we, I make a huge deal about no angles. 
No angles. They have got to score over top of you. No angles. But if, if they're ducking you in here, go ahead and throw it, then she's going to have a great angle. So it is a big deal for us that you cannot throw the ball from the top to the post. Top to the post. Okay, I know that's kind of quick with the um, post defense, but just to kind of get through everything, um, that's, what, that's what we do. So come on here. Now let, let's start to talk about how that relates to the perimeter. Now, it's a little, probably a little bit different for a lot of people, but we teach our players that we can't get beat to the outside, which would be towards the baseline. And once again, why do we do this? Back to the way you guard in the low post has got to be directly related to how you guard on the perimeter. If you're going to guard how we're going to guard, with chin on shoulder, three-quarter, and then behind on the catch, you cannot allow the offense, go ahead, force me now to the baseline. You cannot allow the offense to drive it this way because they're going to get great angles to throw the ball inside of the post. Okay? A lot of people are trying to force to the baseline. We do not for that very reason. We do not. So we're going to pressure here, and now as you can see, Ideally for us, as you kind of play against pressure, then you're, you're, throwing, you're throwing that way because you can't, you can't dribble it to get a better angle. So that's how those two things work together for us in what we do. Really, really important. Hey, and once it goes back to if you have a different way of doing it, that's great. Just make sure those two things work together. Make sure they work together, and that's how it works together for us. All right, now, let's, let's put another perimeter player out here. It's top here. <clears throat> now we can kind of start to define what we call the gap. Let's go ahead and put the ball on the wing here. You are one pass away. We take the line of the ball about halfway and a step off. This is what we call the gap, OK? Once again, some people are going to be up here denying and that's fine. If that's what you do, just be really good at it. The reason we don't do it, because I think more than anything, what hurts you is when they drive it right here, because there's no help, because you're denying. Or if you're going to deny and you're going to help, go ahead and drive it, and you're running over here and helping, you have zero chance to get back. So what we have done and what works for us is that there's really, it's not a concept of you're helping necessarily. All you're doing is recovering. If you're in the right spot, all you have to do is recover. Instead of help and recover, all we have to do is recover. So as you drive it, my, my goal, no, number one, you know, I'll, I'll talk about in the ball. We, we, we preach, hey, tough on the ball, don't get beat to the outside, and guard your yard, which is basically right here. Guard your yard, all right? and do not ever get beat in a straight line. I, I can't do anything for you, if, especially when the ball is at the top. If they're going to beat you in a straight line, I have nothing for you except putting you on the bench. That's the only thing I can do to you, for you. <clears throat> and April and Mo over there know that. Um, now, if you're, going to, if you're going to get beat just a little bit, and we're here in the gap, they got nowhere to go, OK? That, that's why we do it. So now we're, we're tough on the ball. We're not getting beat to the outside. We're going to guard our yard, and then we're going to be right here, seeing both, seeing both, and all you have to do then is close out and play the ball. Okay. So as you, your your job then is, so when in the, you know when you when you start doing this on day one, it'll be like, you know, it's like that's not all you're doing is trying to help her get the ball under control. So you're right here, and as soon as soon as they drive and she's got, and then boom, as soon as she picks it up, you're on your way to the next thing, closing out. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing here. All right. So just go ahead and. Uh, just, you, can just, you can just stay here with the ball and, uh, and just go ahead. Just take one hard dribble. You're in the gap, and you're going to close out. Boom. Good. Nice shot. Okay, good. That's kind of that's, that's the idea. Now, it leads me to the next point, and this is a really, really, really important point. You have got to be good at closing out. And, and I, think you should get, I think you should, number one, work on it. You, you should be specific about how you want it done and really, really hold your players accountable for that. Closing out's a big deal. I'm telling you, it's for us, I know on offense, I'm always preaching reverse the ball, reverse the ball, because eventually you're going to get a couple bad closeouts, you're going to drive it by. For us, when we teach closeouts, um, it's a couple things. One, start with a sprint and with a slide. The slide would be chopping your feet, 
So you're ready to play? Everybody talk set? So we start with a sprint and with a slide. The slide would be chopping your feet. And then one thing that I think is really important is high hands too. High hands, because you've got to be able to take away the quick pass, the quick vision, or the quick shot. And that doesn't mean straight up like this. That means just hands above your shoulders, elbows bent, right like this. If you're closing out like this, I mean, they're going to shoot it or they're going to pass it. So you have got to have high hands. That's a big deal. So we work on closeouts a lot, a whole lot. Matter of fact, let's, 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 let's get up here. Uh, one, one of my favorite drills is we'll do, we put three chairs on, on each side and we'll just use our coaches and yeah, we can use, we can use players. Yeah. And then, and then three people, let's start, let's start there um, guarding one of the people over here. No, we'll just do it with two, and we usually do it with three. So do it with two. So give me two people here guarding these two people on the wings. Guard here. And then, and then give me two people here. You're guarding these two people, but you're, you're halfway here. You're halfway. Okay? So here's, here's what we're going to do. You guys, go ahead and go over there and guard them. Guard them, even though they don't have the ball. Coach Neighbors has the ball. You, you're acting like they have a ball. And so we're, what we're working on here is, number one, just guarding the ball, staying down, being tough on the ball. We're going to work on seeing both. You guys got to see your person. You got to see the ball. You got to see both. So I want you pointing. I want you. The other thing I think is kind of lost on a lot of people or a lot of young people these days is off the ball. They like to stand like this. And I'm telling you, it's a matter of seconds when you have to go from here to here, then run rather than here and then go, it, it'll save you about a half a second, which is important. So we call this chair closeouts because we usually have chairs there where we have people. But so you guys are going to guard the ball. You may tough on the ball, 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 ball. And then uh, Coach Neighbors is going to skip the ball. And, and we're working on, now the last thing we're working on is closeouts. So you're going to start with a sprint and you're going to end with a slide. And your slide is going to be chopping your feet with high hands and then kind of settle into guarding the ball then you guys are going to sprint to help. And same thing, you can't, hey, you can't be jogging in there because if we have a bad closeout and we get beat, we got to have you. So you're going to sprint as hard as you can to, same thing, just use the basket as a, as a measure here. All right, so here we go. All right, tough on the ball. Let's go. Tough, ball, 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 ball. Go, go, sprint. Close out. Good, nice job. Good, see both over there. See both, see both. Go, good. Close out. Good, see both, see both. Good, nice job. Good, sprint, sprint, sprint. Close out. High hands, high hands. Good, get those hands out. Good, nice job. Good, high hands, high hands. Good, nice shot. Good, nice shot. Give him a hand, let's give him a hand. Good job. Good, but I, I'm telling you, closing out, if, if you have a team that closes out really well, that's gonna go a long way. That is a critically important concept. All right, let's, let's start talking, let's start moving the defense here a little bit. So let's get the same thing. We've got um, perimeter here, here, and then now let's add when we're off the ball, okay? Let's see that ball, Amy. Here you go. So now we talked about tough on the ball, not getting beat to the outside. You're going to guard your yard. You're one pass away. You're in the gap, which is defined as about halfway and a step off the line of the ball. Now when we're two passes away, same thing, line of the ball, about halfway and a step off. So you can keep the same concepts off the ball. Okay? And, and you know, if, if it... If you, if you need to have another thing to tell them, at least a foot in the paint when they're on the weak side, you can use the basket. But I usually tell them just about halfway and a step off line of the ball so you can see both. Okay? So now we're on the ball. Let's pass it. Now this is another important concept here. Go ahead and pass it. A lot of times you'll see people running to their person. We really emphasize recovering to the gap. Recovering to the gap. Once again, because what's going to happen when we get the ball at the top? A lot of times they're going to drive it. And I've already told you, if you get beat in a straight line, I can't do anything but take you out of the game. So that's what I'll do. I, I'm not good enough to figure anything else out, so I just take them out. But if you get beat a little bit right here, then that's where I've got your help. But I can't do that if I've recovered to my person. Because when we, when we first start doing this, when our freshmen come in, they always want to go here, and then they want to get to the gap. You've got to recover to the gap, and then now you know, you're in the gap over there. Boom, and as we go, now we're closing out here. We're not getting beat to the outside. We're in the gap. We're about halfway. We're seeing both. 
Everybody got any questions so far? Anything anybody want to talk about? Okay, good. All right, now, um, 